project manager, I work for a strategic development company. And within the strategic site, I'm responsible for managing, procuring infrastructure contracts which deliver utilities and roads, sewers to service land parcels for house builders. Typical tasks and responsibilities in my role would include the placement of a contract for an infrastructure contractor, such as a road that needs to be built on the development. That will include the delivery of the drainage, the utilities. I'll manage that contract in terms of changing instructions, and if there's any variations to it, we will also have to do the financial management of that contract too. We will also have the potential for um, commercial plots to be built on the development where the project management side of our company can be involved and that will involve the um, management again of a contract but it will be of a main contractor building a building rather than a road. As a summary, these are the types of tasks that you can expect, expect to have to carry out as a project manager. Attending meetings, compiling valuations, putting meeting minutes together, generally coordinating a number of consultants on site to get the end result that you want and the team want and internal reporting for the company as well. So in terms of the project management role itself that can differ between a main contractor's project manager and a strategic development project manager and a client side project manager, for example, they will have different items to manage. Some client side project managers have to manage frameworks and frameworks only, whereas a main contractor project manager will be project based or might not be they might have a few projects to manage it can vary quite a lot so if you are going to go into that I would highly recommend that you research the company that you're going to work for and see if you can get a, a standard job description for a project manager from them. Key skills that you'll need to be a project manager are communication you'll need to be able to speak to a range of people from the people laying the bricks on the development to people who are buying a plot of land on the development. So communication is really important to be able to speak to a whole breadth of different people and get the message across in a way that they will understand and you get the result that you want. Other skills that you'll need are organisational skills. You'll need to be able to manage a number of consultants at any one time, manage a project, manage a contractor, manage a client, um, and you need to be able to do that effectively. There will be an element of technical knowledge that you will need, but that can come through learning via apprenticeship schemes or university degrees. I started out as a management trainee. This was an apprenticeship scheme run by a main contractor. They offered six years part-time degree funding and that gave me six years working experience as well. Within that, they rotated you around the business so you could make sure that you really picked what it was that you wanted to do. In terms of qualifications that I needed for that, it was straight out of A-level, so I had to have some relevant A-level subjects. For me, it was design technology. That was the only thing that was available at the time. Um, it will depend on the company that you go for as to what they will offer you um, and what their minimum requirements are. Some companies offer you um, graduate schemes whereby you have to have a degree for it. Some will take you from A-level, some will take you from HMD level. It does depend, but um, as a minimum, you need A-levels. University apprenticeship. I personally would say apprenticeship is a better option because you gain life experience through working with colleagues who are in far in advance of your years and they've got far more experience under their belt. You can gain knowledge from them as well as the theoretical knowledge that you'll get from doing your course part time through university or college or however however the um, the course takes takes its shape. In terms of life progression. I would say apprenticeship because it's helped me personally get ahead in life. I've come out of my apprenticeship scheme with no, stu no student debt and um, I've been able to get on the housing ladder early which has helped me. Part of me wishes that I went to university for the social side of things as you do miss out on that but in my opinion it's not the be all and end all of everything. Depending on which route you take, if you come out as a graduate you might you will be on slightly lower than what you would be if you were fully qualified with experience because if you are a graduate, you have theoretical knowledge and a degree behind you, you don't have any work experience to back that up, which is a disadvantage. If you go through a work experience um, and then into an apprenticeship placement, your wages might be slightly lower than you would like, but you also have to bear in mind that the, the um, company that you'll be working for will be paying your, your fees, which are quite hefty these days. 
Um, once you're fully qualified as a project manager, you can expect to earn anywhere between 14 and 50,000 pounds. That is dependent on the location you're working. Obviously, London will attract a higher wage. I started life as a trainee quantity surveyor and I worked through projects and gained experience and then got promoted to an assistant and then eventually a quantity surveyor at my last company that I worked for. Um, following on from that I, I had a switch and I went to a different side of quantity surveying, so not main contracting, I went client side and I was a client side quantity surveyor for a couple of years. I then joined Urban and Civic as a project manager. Um, they have a mix of financial control and project management which really appealed to me. My next step, hopefully, is going to be a senior project manager. Moving on from that, there are other roles within the business that could take shape depending on what my personal goals and aspirations are, whether or not I want to stick to construction side of things or if I want to switch on to planning. This planning development management could be something that is considered. For a project manager, starting out I would recommend going to main contractors as they will be able to actually provide some knowledge of how the process works in terms of procuring a project, designing a project, managing a project, being on site. There are some age restrictions that might apply around that, for example I don't believe many companies except 16 or under on site unless there's a specific risk assessment which you would need to take into account. But you can normally just get in contact with them, there is normally a community liaison individual within the company that you might be able to reach out to and see if you can get some work experience. Best times, school holidays for, for most of you if you're looking to go to university or apprenticeships. And the companies that I'd recommend are the big main contractors, um, ISG, Morgan Sindel, Wilmot Dixon, RG Carter. They're all pretty good companies that will be able to show a whole range of what's involved in a typical project. I enjoy project management in terms of building a building because I like seeing drawings actually come to life and seeing the details actually on site and being able to walk around that room or that hall or whatever. It's nice to be able to see it and be, be there. In terms of project management on a strategic development site, it's more of the concept of watching an idea be refined, go into planning and actually watch it being delivered and then speak to the person that lives in that house at number 22 and know that they love living at Alconbury or any other strategic site that you might work on and know that you've played a part in making their home. That's really rewarding for me. Advice to young people looking for career options is try everything. If you can get work experience in anything, even if you think I don't want to do this long term, try it rule it out and if you want to know a bit more about something you've got the opportunity to ask people who have got experience in there who've been doing the job for 10-20 years and can give you pros and cons and maybe answer questions that you might not be able to get answers to on the internet. Um, I would also say that don't worry about it, don't put too much pressure on yourself, whatever job role you decide to go into straight after uni, straight after college, sick form, whatever, it's not forever. The skills that you get in that job you'll be able to transfer communication organisational skills, timekeeping skills, those are things that you will always need and they will always be useful in whatever job that you do do and any knowledge that you gain in your first job you'll use. It's not forever and I think that a lot of young people put too much pressure on themselves because of the cost of university fees, because of the fact that it's a specific course that you're doing. It doesn't mean that if you do a degree in history that you have to become a historian. You could transfer that knowledge somewhere else.